This is a Raspberry Pi Pico, and on the end of it, I have a very special sensor board. Meet the MPU650, a 6 degrees of freedom sensor with a gyroscope and accelerometer built in. It uses the I2C communications protocol. This is branded from A to Z delivery. I purchased a box of these for £8.99, making them very affordable. Inside the box, I received five individual units. It also came with some ebooks, which I honestly didn't bother downloading. Each one comes pre packaged in its own shielded container. And it comes with two different rows of pins. As you can see, I 3D printed a block so I could neatly attach this all together while I'm testing. This simply uses M2 hex nuts to hold everything together. Today, I'm looking at the gyroscope. The goal of this project is simply to detect if I'm tilting it forwards, backwards, left, right, or twisting it left or right along the Z axis. This becomes your basic pitch, roll, and yaw controls. The front of the unit is where the pins are lined, so when I tilt this forward, it should detect forward. I use some simple if statements to indicate this using logic. So now, as I tilt the unit forward, it reports forward, and as I bring it back up, it detects backwards. If I tilt it to the right, it detects that it's rotating around the x-axis, and if I tilt to the left, it detects that it's tilting that way. If I twist it right, it detects, and if I twist it left, it detects as well. You can download this project code from ckenthusiast.com. Simply go to RPI Pico Projects and select the MPU650 Gyroscope Detection Program. You will find three files inside this archive. Each of these needs to be loaded into Thony and brought into our device. Before we proceed any further, we of course need to wire this device to our Raspberry Pi. The first two important pins are VCC and ground. VCC, the red wire here, goes to pin 39. The ground can go to any of the ground contacts on the Raspberry Pi. I have chosen pin 38 for the ground. Next we have SDA and SCL. You may be wondering what XDA and XCL, these are auxiliaries of SDA and SCL, which means you can connect them to multiple devices. ADO is a way of changing the address of the unit, and I wouldn't worry too much about this now. SDA is destined for pin 1. It is indicated by the yellow wire and simply plugged into the first pin of the board. Then SCL is destined for pin 2, as you can see from the orange wire. Even though there's four spare pins, this is all we need to establish communication between the Raspberry Pi and the MPU6050. If you would like to download this block to 3D print yourself, you can grab it from my website. Simply head over to 3D Prints and click on it to download. I'm going to quickly explain what's going on in this program. This is using standard MicroPython. We are going to load the IMU and import the MPU6050. This is a separate .py file that's already been uploaded. One of the dependencies for this particular file is vector 3D. This provides some mathematical functions that allow us to calculate our angles. 
both vector3d.py and imu.py must be present and uploaded to the Raspberry Pi in order for this program to work. IMU stands for Inertia Measurement Unit and it is directly responsibility for calculating the gyroscope when it's in action. Both these files originate from the MicroPython IMU MicroPython MPU 9x50. As you can see, IMUPY is present as well as Vector3D.py. Once that's been imported, we then import time, which allows the system to sleep. We then, from machine, import pin and I squared C, the communication protocols we'll be using. Pin references GP pins rather than physical pins. This is worth noting, because if you look at any pinout of a Raspberry Pi, you'll see that the very first pin is referenced as 1. However, GP0 is different. This could be confirmed by looking at the Pico R3 revision, where we got GP0 and GP1, but they are labelled physically on the board as 1 and 2. This can be quite confusing for new users, so it's worth mentioning. The first number here refers to the channel. If you look on this diagram, we have I to C0 and I to C0 here. So this is channel 0 and this will be channel 1. So if you wanted channel 1, you'd have to reference different pins. To make things a little bit more confusing, you can also reference it as part of GP4 and 5 as well. We then create an IMU object and reference it to the MPU 650i to C protocol. What that means is, is it's referencing this class here and grabbing the data using it. We're not going to go through all the details of how this works because this is becoming quite low level. The point is this class is brought in and it's referenced. We then print the temperature just because we can. It's part of the IMU, so we might as well throw it in there. To read the accelerometer, we need imu.excel. And to read the gyroscope, we need imu.gyro. IMU.temperature will of course return the temperature, and we're rounding it to two decimal points. Then we have a series of logic statements. If the gyroscope is tilted around the x-axis by over 45 degrees, then we register a rotation left. When the gyroscope registers a positive value, it is being rotated left, whereas if it is representing a negative value, it is rotating right. In order to detect rotation backwards and rotation forwards, we are rotating around the y-axis. To help visualise what we're doing, we have a very simple diagram here. This is the circuit board we're dealing with, and along this front side is going to be the row of pins. When we tilt it left or right, we are rotating around the x-axis. When we are tilting forward and backwards, we are tilting around the y-axis. And when we're twisting our board, it is rotating around the z-axis. The number 45 represents the number of degrees that it must be tilted at any one moment in order to trigger this motion. I set it to 45 degrees because it gives me quite a lot of control as to when I want to tilt it and when I don't want to tilt it. It eliminates a lot of handshake. If you want a more sensitive process, you can reduce this number all the way down to 1 if you want to, in which case you'll get a lot of very rapid feedback. Just as an example of this, let's try changing all these to 1 and we'll see the big amount of data we're about to get simply from our hand shaking and the device not moving very much.
if we up the values to 5, we seem to be getting a lot of rights and a lot of lefts. By very slight movements, I can trigger all sorts of results. So this isn't really giving me the accuracy I want when I'm trying to deliberately get a result. Once I change it back to 45, it gives me very deliberate control of the unit in question, meaning that I can get some twists when I want some twists, I can get some rotations when I want some rotations, and some tilts when I want some tilts. To help slow down the program, I use time.sleep0.2. You can reduce this down if you want faster, more responsive controls. And this brings us to the end of our very simple program. As you can see, we now have some kind of motion control going on with the gyroscopic sensor. This can be used for any number of things. For example, upon tilting forward, you could start moving a mouse pointer upwards. And when you tilt it backwards once, it could stop the mouse and tilt it backwards again. Then it could continue going in the other direction. You could even use twists left and right as mouse clicks if you wanted, creating a very interesting air mouse design. It can also be used as a monitoring sensor. So if you have an object that should be very stationary most of the time, but is moving at unknown times or unknown reasons, then this could be a sensor that triggers some kind of warning that something's gone wrong. The usage of this very cheap sensor board is, of course, up to your imagination. But now you know how to get data and make decisions with the gyroscope as to which direction things are being pointed, you can certainly incorporate into one of your own projects. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please like and subscribe and keep those videos coming from me. Many thanks again, and I hope to see you all again soon.